Because, like, you can go through the Divine Beast and all that shit, and you can take on the, the Blights one by one. But when you're in there, in the... Like, first of all, you actually start in, like, you know, the throne room of Hyrule Castle. And then you're just taking on all these Blights one after the other. And they had to completely restructure these fights with the Blights. But you're doing them simultaneously. And, uh, and then... It, it drops down into Calamity Ganon, but half of his health bar isn't taken away by, you know, the Divine Beasts. I get that that's supposed to be rewarding, but there's so much more satisfaction when you're just going into all of this shit without all of the Divine Beasts, like, or the, the champion powers where you can just, like, instantly shield yourself or instantly regenerate all your health or, or anything like that. You're, you're a lot more limited, and it's relying so much more on your skill and your reflexes, your ability to parry, your ability to dodge and do the flurry rush and everything like that. Breath of the Wild is better when you ignore 70% of the game. You mean kind of like how Breath of the like it's like even even Tide Island and Breath of the Wild. There's like, hey, by the way, now that we've taken all your shit away, the game's fun again. I I actually did that on stream too, and I spent like 40 minutes fighting a Hinox. <laughs> and just like throwing remote bombs at him until uh, chipping away at his health until he was dead. I know we talked about it last week. I'm not, and I, I know Pup liked to kind of like keep pinpointing like, oh yeah, the nuts and bolts of it all. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm really not. Oh, uh, what? Like putting a bunch of stuff together with yeah. that? To make me... Well, no, I'm not either. And somebody made a really good point. Sorry, I cut you off there. No, that's, that's just going to keep whining. That's it. Hey, well, uh, well, that was like uh, the lake where they were showing off like, hey, here's where you can uh, you can put some logs together and some motors and you can make a, a little boat. And someone was just like, you. And by the time they finished making the boat and not even started making their way across it, you would have already used Karyanis to make ice pillars and just gotten across that in yep. Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. So they're they're taking away features to justify a feature that takes a longer amount of time to do the same thing. I'm um hmm. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna wait and see, but what from what I'm seeing so far, like yeah, I am excited about the game, really am, but <laughs> not looking forward to building you just shit. Got really static you there for a minute, Nick. Yeah, you're gonna be all right. Everyone's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Um <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody to Sunset City, a Sonic podcast for the classic and Zelda age. How's everyone doing today? We got Cirrus? I'm I'm here and tired and I some things have happened with Sega that I don't know if I enjoy, which is pretty normal. Cool. Wayne? I'm in an uncharacteristically good mood. Go watch Susan A. Was, what? What it, is that? It's a movie. It's a movie. Yeah, well, what, it's in theaters right now. I've never heard of uh, it. You ever, seen, you ever seen Your Name or Weathering With You? No, what? Oh, okay. So, uh, there's this, uh, there's this director in Japan, Makoto Shankai. Uh, he directs some anime films and he did, uh, two really good ones called Your Name and Weathering With You. And, uh, they gained a bit of a reputation because they were actually theatrically released in the States and they, they stayed around for a little while. And the new one, Suzume, is super good. It's the best one out of the three. I absolutely adored it. I want to go see it in IMAX again and nobody is talking about that movie. Yeah, I've literally oh. never heard of it before. Yeah, you should go watch it. Fair enough. I was seeing in the comments Wayne mansplaining Breath of the Wild. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> our jobs. That's sort of our jobs. I mean, what's what's a yeah. YouTube what's a YouTube commenter? Like commenter explainer, whatever you know. I don't know my job. I'm realizing. <laughs> I don't know how to describe my own I, job. I I don't know mine either. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing on Twitch. I just turn on the camera and pretend that things work. Well, so we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat, Nick. <laughs> None of us know what the fuck we're doing. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, guys, we actually have a lot to talk about. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of wobbliness. Is my voice all staticky right now? I, I tried to tell you that. You just said, ah, you'll be okay. <laughs> oh, I'm just I like, literally. I, oh, I, does it only go when I talk? That's interesting. I'm looking you, at the light. You, I mean, you sound presentable. Well, that's... But you also sound, like, overexposed. Am I on the wrong microphone, maybe? Do you think that's maybe the problem? <laughs> I wonder if that's the case. I'm gonna go over. Know. I'm gonna over here. Let's see user settings. Um, what's it called? What's it called? Voice and video. Knows what's up? Default. Well, maybe it's just wrong for you guys. You ever think about that? No. Let's see. No, no, that's impossible. I'm always correct. Okay. How's how's that? For you guys. 
You sound fine. Oh. Well, whatever. Anyway, it, I hear I hear no difference. It sounds. I'm not gonna lie. It actually sounds kind of awful. It's not like so. It's not like staticky. Like there's crackling or anything. That's not what it is. It's like there's a lot of like gain. The, yeah, it sounds like the the gain on the mic is way up, or you're way too close to the mic. One of the two. Oh, I think I just turned it up too loud. Hang on, let's try this. How's that? Now you're a little quiet, but that oh, is okay. better. Hang on. How about how about that? Holy shit! That, there we go. That's good. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. oh. Oh, listen to us, audio platform. Yeah. Oh, my God. We're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, as you guys might have noticed, we don't have uh, our two chaotic uh, little baby boys. Gilly uh, is busy with work, and uh, Pup, it's his birthday. He's out and about in the world. So happy birthday, Pup. Happy birthday, Pup. And, and now that it's Pup's birthday, he can leave. And he like gave he us the greatest <laughs> gift, silence. <laughs> Damn. Um. Oh boy. Yeah, we actually have a lot of Sonic news to get into today. I uh, was kind of surprised. Like every day, there seemed to be like a new bit of news for us to get into. Um. So we're gonna leave some of the more exciting stuff near the back end. Let's get kind of Sonic related out of the way. But apparently, Sega bought Rovio, which uh, if you guys don't know, in the world, those are. The folks who created Angry Bird. So how's how's everybody feel about that? It it, it feels just a few years. There's a few years off, right? I mean, like, considering how much they paid for them, yeah, hundred percent. Like they paid what seven hundred and eighty million or something like that. It's I, something like that. Yeah, pretty yeah. penny. Yeah, I will say that I've been kind of out of the loop when it comes to the mobile market because I'm always shocked to find out that it's six. Stuff like Angry Birds are successful, let alone like making the absurd amount of money they it apparently does. Um, but I'm also just like, yeah, Angry Birds isn't really in the the cultural zeitgeist the way that it used to be. It's I, not, and they had a like they had a whole movie, and nobody talked had, about it. They oh, they had movies. two movies. That, Both of them the were surprisingly not terrible. <laughs> like it just. It's one of those is one of those weird decisions from Sega, right? Because we we get that all the time, just in in the Sonic world, where we go, wait, we have baffling decisions from Sega constantly. And this yeah. is another one of those where I'm just like, what is the? I'm trying to figure out what is the gain here. What is, is it? Just acquire the the lucrative Angry Birds IP because the, the gain is not feeding that money to Sonic Team towards one of their main IPs. Well, that they, will they will never do. <laughs> They will never feed money into Sonic, ever. I have to but. wonder. I, I mean, I just, I don't know, like the back end of it. I wonder if part of it is uh, infrastructure wise in terms of mobile design, like because Rovio, regardless oh. of how well they're doing now, they have to have a pretty good understanding of the mobile market. Even though... I see why they did it. I, I see why they did it now. What? Why? In the year of 2022 alone, Rovio Entertainment pulled in almost 320 million euros in revenue. So about 400 million dollars. Yeah. I mean, the, the brand they is just, still around. So like they're. Sega paid effectively two years worth of Rovio generated revenue. So in about two years, they're going to make that money back ish if like they're gonna make I, that money back i mean if that brand stays on top of it for another two years that considering yeah that's uh i was wondering about that and i do wonder and i see other people into the comments too wondering if that's gonna have any effect on sega Hardlight. i have no idea i genuinely don't know i don't know if they're gonna like kind of merge their mobile divisions together or anything like that is sega Hardlight like their only branding for mobile well, not branding but like only I'm, dev team for the mobile side of things i'm not certain um, at the very least, I don't know of any other ones that pop up to my head no, automatically in terms neither. of their dev teams. And it's just like, I mean, it's pretty apparent, like in terms of Sonic, like Hardlight makes more money for Sonic than any other gaming uh, avenue for them right now. Um, arguably, kind of compared comparatively even to the movie. I mean, it's kind of frustrating just in the, the terms of like where gaming is going in general, but like. It is, it is what it is like we we tend not to pay attention to the mobile side of things but i i don't think um 
I don't think this was like the dumbest decision Sega's ever made. I would say Angry when, Birds is probably still as culturally popular as Sonic itself. So, well, yeah, when you're when you're looking at it like from a more pragmatic angle, again, I don't hear Angry Birds get brought up in my circles ever at all. That does not mean that it isn't like making all of the money. There's just so many diverse voices, and we. In, in a weird way for how much our uh, connection to other people has expanded due to the Internet, we've also closed ourselves off into bubbles easier. Well, yeah, so. we, we, we atomize really, really easy. Yeah. Thanks to the, the way things are structured now. But I guess like it, as far as Angry Birds is concerned, it does make sense that they're not part of the cultural conversation as much anymore it, while still making all of the money. Because if you if, if you look at the history of, of the mobile market in general, when smartphones were new and like little app games were just kind of floating around, Angry Birds was one of the first ones that like took the world by storm in terms of just popularity. There wasn't yeah. a whole lot of that. Like after Angry Birds, we got, you know, stuff like Clash of Clans and stuff like that that happened later on. But all that meant is there was always some new mobile game that was taking the world by storm for usually about three to four months. And then a new one would enter the social side, guys, and then the last one would be talked about then. But that doesn't mean that, especially looking at these numbers, it doesn't mean that those older games ever stopped making money because their business model is not the same as the business model of, you know, the, the games that we grew up with. Because games we grew up with, their business model was sell game, make money, uh, and then work on new game while the game slowly has sales die down, but they're still selling units. The mobile market doesn't work that way. The mobile market is you load up a bunch of games on your phone and then you kind of fuck around with them and they nickel and dime you until you, you don't realize you've bought like 15 games worth of game. Yeah. And you've gained nothing in those games, but you've, but you've done it. Like the microtransactions have definitely very, very sneakily made it to where money can slip out of your pocket quickly with those games. And especially because mobile games are all they connected to your wallet. It's very, very easy for them to make money off of you. So the entire marketing strategy is just, it's different now it's subtle. And because the mobile marketing strategy is subtle, it makes sense that a, especially looking at those numbers, it makes sense that those numbers would still be reflective now, even if we're not talking about that game. That said, though, we're still way, way past the days of, like, Angry Birds Star Wars. You know, like, I, we... It's like 10 years ago, you couldn't get away from those stupid birds. They were not just on mobile, they were on home platforms. I mean, the 3DS game alone, like, I can't go into a thrift store without seeing an Angry Birds 3DS game somewhere, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So... It we, is interesting... I, I feel like I started hearing the discussion of the of the games or, or like seeing it around start to die off once the movie came out or the first one, rather. Yeah. And then they made enough to make a second movie, though, which is interesting. I wonder what those deals are like in terms of like who made those movies? Was it Blue Sky or? I, I, I want to say it was Blue Sky. What's funny is the second movie was actually it's actually solid. It's not great, but it was it was all right. I, I understand that movie deals are not the same as uh, video game deals, but my brain was also doing like a roundabout, like, what if this is their way to eventually make like a CG Sonic movie? Like just trying to connect very loose dots there, which makes no sense. I still firmly believe that after the Mario movie, Sega is definitely going to be reconsidering what we do with uh, with Sonic once that third movie comes out. Just imagine the trailer yeah. for the third Sonic movie is like... We get the they're, they're going to do the gun story still because they've already set that up. I guarantee you that most of that movie's already been shot at this point. Yeah, no, the, um, whatever's up for Sonic 3, it's it's been on track, I'm sure. Yeah, but then I imagine that like the very next thing is probably going to be a reverse Sonic X. Like, oh, OK, well, we've done our stuff on Earth. We've done the one plot line that Sonic has that has to be on Earth. And now we can just do everything else in Sonic's world. Well, let's just make that transition right now, then, since, uh, I mean, we it's kind of a wait and see to see what they do with Rovio and Angry Birds. Like, I'm sure there's going to be a Sonic crossover, some shit at some point there. It's just an itching little bit of news. But while we're talking about movie Sonic news, uh, that is the next little bit of something that we got. Uh, we got our first tease uh, in terms of an image for the Knuckles show, and we even got the, the basic synopsis as well, which apparently is... Uh, 
Knuckles takes Wade under under his wing to tree train him to be a a kidna warrior. I um I hate it too because I, I put it together <laughs> earlier this week and I was just like, oh my god, he's gonna get the hat because it's gonna be it's gonna be a repurposed sheriff's hat. That's yep. gonna be the the origin for the hat now. And I Yeah. <laughs> Is that a, yeah, I don't see that being a problem in terms of where the hat comes from. No, it's just dumb. It's like it's like uh, I don't know. I'd almost prefer there just not be an explanation. It's kind of like, oh, this is how Han Solo got his name. It's just ugh. I, you, I mean, but it's not though. Uh, okay, that stupid but, hat. Uh, so, that dumb stupid hat. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. I'm about to take the L's or whatever you kids say. I hate that hat and i've always I've hated this always that hat that stupid dumb hat everyone's like oh the hat it's from the ova oh the hat fuck that hat fuck that hat <laughs> to death and i'll tell you why because when i was a child i can't tell you i said it a thousand times that stupid sad am show and the stupid adventures of sonic the hedgehog like cool there's a hot whatever she's supposed to be chipmunk whatever but the point is where's my game stuff Where's Metal Sonic? Where's Knuckles? I've waited forever as a little babby boy to have Knuckles on screen doing something. I wanted to see him animated. I wanted to see him in a cartoon. The first thing I get is the OVA. It's got Metal Sonic. He's a badass. Then Knuckles is there. He's off model. Where'd that hat come from? Why is he wearing a hat? How are you digging with a hat on, bro? What is that hat there for? It's the dumbest thing. Then that thing keeps showing up every now and then in the comics, in the Boom Show, and in the mobile games. Everyone's like, oh my god, it's the hat. We know it's the hat. It's the hat. The hat's been here. I don't care. I don't care about the hat. I don't give a damn about the hat. Where's Angel Island? I don't give a shit about the hat. Fuck Wade. Where's the island? <sighs> yeah, no, fuck Wade. I, I uh... I I want Angel Island. I want to start setting up shit towards perfect chaos. I don't care that that's the easy thing to to want out of out of the Knuckle series. It's what I want. Uh, and uh, him like training Wade to box or something. I don't fucking know what they're doing with this. You know what this feels like, honestly, the first movie. This feels like it, this feels like an anime filler arc. Actually, Nick. <laughs> yes, uh, say that again, a little louder. It's the first movie. It's the first yeah. movie. It's, I don't... It's, a, it's, a buddy, it's a buddy cop film. It's a buddy cop film filler anime arc before we get to the third movie. <laughs> and they're going to put it out as a whole show. That's, that, is, that is 2023. When you were a kid, 100 episodes of Naruto had to be skipped manually because they were part of the damn show, but they had nothing to do with the plot. Now that you're an adult, we just make the filler a separate show and we market it as a brand new thing. It's it's what Tanami did with the Garlic Jr. saga. They ripped it out of the show and made it its own thing so that nobody had to fucking watch it. I, I do love the amount of people there just like, oh boy, I can't wait to see the, the chaotic in in uh, the Knuckle series, and yeah, I'm like, you're luck. never not getting them. them. Yeah, good luck. Fucking, <laughs> you're not. But you got I your mean, hat, not though. Only, <laughs> you got not your only hat. are you not. Not no. only are you not getting the chaotics because I guarantee you the the budget for the show is going to be like a handful of IRL locations with a very poorly done CG Knuckles compared to compared to normal. Um, but also. We got it. We got that comic tie in that showed us exactly where the chaotics are. Not on I, Earth. I mean, it might be canon, it might not be. Um, it's a shame that that pup is not here because we were talking about this a little bit on the drive down to San Francisco. I, I would be, I would be so down for this series, even with like him training Wade, if it took it back to what was in the prequel comic, and it's just them world hopping. I mean, yeah, can you imagine? I mean, before Dra Sonic does that, Wade does. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Dragging, so like. I seeing Sonic characters be fish fish out of water on Earth is really boring because we've seen that story a thousand times in a bunch of other bits of media. But seeing a human be a fish out of water just being dragged along with knuckles. No, dude, I'm that sorry. actually is more funny to me. No, what? Because like he was like, hey, what if it's like a, a ruse and they actually go look for Angel Island? I keep thinking I don't want Wade there when they discover Angel Island. <laughs> you don't want you don't want Wade on Angel Island getting him trap. I don't want Wade. Go away. I I I do like when a, a there've been few instances of this happening, but 
every once in a while I'll see a dumb comic relief character like grow on me because they're put in a more serious environment. A, a Groose from Skyward Sword comes to mind. Or he's this yeah. stupid bumbling oaf, but then like you put him in a more serious situation where he's got to shape up and he's got to step up and everything like that. Dude, do that with Wade. Like, do the Angel Island shit. Have this like uh, the dark history of the echidnas put on on full force and like start showing us some of uh, some of that stuff. Uh, you know, the history of them with the Chaos Emeralds and everything like that. And then have Wade just kind of like have his mind recontextualized. He's this uh, and have him go from this this guy who's like this timid little little sheriff in his tiny town who doesn't know how to deal with anything versus towards you know him growing into doing the most important thing he will ever do in his life they're not gonna do that no but you know the opportunity <laughs> I mean, you know why they're not gonna you know why they're not gonna do that because they had an opportunity to do that in the second movie when they had wade fight eggman's subordinate and it just didn't it was it was kind of funny. I, I I didn't hate it, but that was the opportunity to do that. Unless they wanted to do the route of him going like, "I was useless when that happened. I don't want to be like that again." Knuckles, I need you to fix. Me. Oh God, that's what they're gonna do. <laughs> that's exactly what they're gonna I mean, do. It, it's not a terrible idea for a plot. It's, it's not what I would have gone with for a Knuckles series, but. Here's what I'm worried it's about. Not, it's not the worst thing as a plot. It's just that it's it's character development, not for the characters we, we care about. Yeah. Here's my concern. Um, so both Wade and Knuckles are used as kind of they're never the straight men in the in the setups there. Like yeah. Knuckles never knows what's going on. And I'm worried they have not really dropped that with the with the character. Like I'd be hoping like he just kind of knows his way around Earth a little bit better. But after that little animated short, I'm I'm worried they're gonna keep that particular joke going a bit too far. And Wade is not the guy to be like, yo, you gotta chill out. Like Wade's Wade's a bumbling idiot. He's Wade's the one to encourage Knuckles because he doesn't understand that Knuckles is making mistakes. His name is way too close to mine. It's just destroying my brain. <laughs> Wade is bus. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> to, to be fair, Wayne, you would encourage Knuckles to make terrible decisions as well. What? I I would. I think you would. To encourage Knuckles to make bad choices. Yes, as long yeah. as they led you to a temple. Oh damn, you are right. Yup. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would do yeah. that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it is like <laughs> I shouldn't be here. This place is sacred, and you'd be like Sa sacred. That sounds like <laughs> that, that sounds cool. <laughs> that sounds that sounds cool. Can we can we go there? I I got a camera. One? Yeah. <laughs> I I just think the synopsis was just like a just a splash of water in the face for me in terms of like what we'd want from a knuckle show is a very different idea from what the tone of these movies are. And um, I mean they they got the good moments. I've definitely sung the praises of this here and there, but it's. It's going to be a corny little time. Like It's just like the movies. Like I don't know why I'd, I, I'd expect anything otherwise. I think a part of it for me is just because Sonic 2 felt like such a big step up from the first one in terms of what I wanted out of a Sonic movie. Uh, there were little pieces here and there. I One of my favorite scenes in Sonic 2, and it, this is going to sound weird, is uh, Knuckles and, and Sonic on the side of a cliff in Ice Cap just talking to each other and just kind of laying themselves out. And mm. uh, I, I like that moment. I like their little like scuffle on the beach after the, the temple fight and everything. Sonic two had genuine character moments and it made me think, okay, these guys, there's somebody in this writer's room that understands these characters and wants to do something a little deeper than, than just little comedic jokes with them. And, uh, it's like they, they want to have fun with the characters, which is good. I want to have fun with the characters, too. But it, you can do a little bit more than that. And I saw glimpses of that in Sonic 2. That's why it's disappointing to me when we get the little short, when we get, like, the synopsis for the Knuckles series, where it's just like, yeah, but the, the really forced comedic aspect of it is um is, is still going to be there. And for a character that, like Knuckles... It, to what degree they're going to force that it, and I'm, I'm getting so tired of it in media in general i i'm so excited about guardians of the galaxy 3 but i keep seeing clips of it 
and it's everything where it, it's just scenes where I'm like, I feel like I would enjoy this more if they didn't try to make a joke out of it. And I'm the, getting uh, tired of, of movies. The Marvel that are, movie, the Marvel movie effect. Yeah, it's it's gotten it's gotten old, man. And I'm I'm just done. I'm I'm tired of it. I can I can understand that the like every every weighty scene must be broken up by some type of humor at some point. Otherwise, it, it, things it, sit too long. Yeah, it's it's weird, though, right? Because it's like, um, I feel like Sonic 2 again in moments. It did it better than some Marvel movies where it actually let the characters have a damn moment. Yep. Uh, it, it's like I, I people have been sharing around that that clip from uh modok and uh and cassie laying yeah. from the <laughs> yeah. batman quantumania and everybody's just like you can tell the actors have no idea if this is supposed to be an emotional moment or a joke i know and it's i'm just so like yeah dude i saw that like i'm so glad i skipped that movie holy it's, shit it's yeah. so rough it's so rough I'm all, it's too late oh. i'm already a dick stop being a dick that's the big moment all right it's the it, whole like a lot of that might also come down just to the breakneck pace of those movies being made. But still, that's definitely it has become popular. Therefore, everybody must emulate it ism. Yeah, it's also a, it's also got to be for kids. End of the day, like that's also an important factor. But that is true. And as much as I don't like using that as an excuse, I do also kind of have to look at it, uh, you know, realistically and, and be like, yeah, that is the target audience of this. Yeah. And and as, as much as I want to bellyache about what I want out of a Sonic story, I wanted this stuff out of a Sonic story when I was a kid. Yeah. I'm not the only generation that this franchise matters to anymore. Yeah, I am. Yeah. It's. And it's always going to be a balance kind of a thing because the more I think about it, it's like, yeah, but like a super serious knuckle story. Uh, well, we've seen Penders and what he's done with the comics and <laughs> there's there's a balance. I think the perfect balance in terms of knuckles for me is that animated short for Frontiers. Oh, that was so good. I I, I want like a uh, I want another like just full length OVA. Give me like a, a half hour of that. Yeah, no, I would take yeah. a, I take more of that animation over over the live action knuckle show any day, but I'm uh I'm going off of just uh, assumptions. It could be a great I, show. It really could yeah. be. Yeah. It is I'm, it is I'm, interesting. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say I'm I'm hoping that we get something that is good in its own right despite what its plot is cuz you can have like just terrible ass plots that are held together through just pure character interaction. Yeah. I'm hoping we get something like that. I would like if we get something I'm just going to, you know, sit back, hope, and pray that that's about what we get, is that, hey, here's this show, the plot is garbage, the story is nonsensical, but you want to watch more of it because you're here seeing these characters do just things together. Like, you just want to see these characters on screen. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping we get, because otherwise, like, if, if we get that, then I can stomach practically anything that gets thrown our way. They just can't do an entire show of just a just training Wade though, right? Like that can't be the entire show. Like it's not Wade. I, the show's not called Wade. I if I if I were to look at this idea and think about how how you would go about doing it and make it good, but like just with the synopsis we have, that would be the synopsis for the first episode, functionally. Like Wade begins his training arc and then through that a whole bunch of just shenanigans happens, which I mean, like you did say, that's kind of what the first movie was anyway, where it's just like, you know, welcome to the buddy cop film. There is a thing that is happening, but because of that, characters are going to experience wacky things back forth front and center. And that's probably what it's going to end up being. We're just going to be like, hey, here's the plot. The plot doesn't matter. The plot's just an excuse to make sure that these characters make it from point A to B to C to D and experience wacky things. If that is something as cool as actually doing world hopping like Wayne had said, then cool. If it ends up being just kind of going around green hills and eating ice cream, I at least hope the dialogue's written well. I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, Sorry, go ahead, Wayne. I just... <sighs> It is weird because, again, bringing up that that Knuckles animation, um, 
you know, uh, prologuing frontier, uh, frontiers. I, I love that Knuckles was talking about how, like, there's still stuff in Angel Island he doesn't know about, and he's still discovering new parts of it and everything. And I'm like, that's awesome. I want to be there for it. Yeah. I, I want <laughs> to discover new things about Angel Island. We haven't messed around with it that much outside of, like, I think the last time we've really tried was what chronicles and that doesn't really count so Not anymore, yeah. sure doesn't <laughs> yeah yeah that is a shame i yeah uh, i'm trying to remain positive trying to do something because i know if pup was here he'd definitely be a bit more positive about this stuff than, than we're being in terms of our trepidation with this stuff so yeah but at the same time it's it's not like it's not like we're just kind of hit firing negativity for the sake of it. No, no, but you know, it, it is what it is. I think we're just, I think Occam's razor here. I think we're going to get what it says on the tin. I think we're going to get the first movie, but they're swip, uh, fl- flip flopping the personalities. I try to say flip flopping and swapping at the same time. <laughs> so we get the serious furry thing and the, the silly human instead of the other way yeah. around. But we'll see. I yeah. really hope they, they incorporate more of I mean, I'm hoping the hat at the very least is kind of in just saying like, hey, we're we're paying attention to what matters about the character. Like we're looking at the history of it and we understand what the hat represents more than this being the hat itself. As much as I, you know, yell about the hat here or there. The hat the hat not being the important thing, the the story that circumstantially gets you the hat being fun. Yeah. I just don't want the hat to be yeah. a forever accessory to knuckles. It's just why I was mad. It's fine. I mean, he wouldn't be off model anymore if that was the case. <laughs> no, I'm gonna freak the fuck silver out. silver linings, Nick. Can't mm. be off model if it's part of the model forever. Mm. Mm. It was just a, it was it was a future proofed knuckles model all along. It's fine. Didn't he have an Australian accent in that movie? There's even something with that no. voice. It wasn't Australian though. It wasn't Australian. Okay, no. it's been a minute. I, I need. No, he it. sounded like this. Oh, God. Yeah, whatever, everybody whatever had a voice kind of like this. What's going on? <laughs> Actually, yeah, no, Sonic sounded like that too. Just the yeah, the South Park Canadians. How's it going, guys? I <laughs> How's it going, guy? How's it going, guy? <laughs> I I want Sonic and Knuckles just punching each other in the entire time. They're going like, "I'm not your buddy, guy. I'm not your guy. <laughs> I'm not your guy, buddy." <laughs> I'm not your friend, guy. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? <laughs> and then they just fart on each other. That blast. God damn it. There goes Metal Sonic. He's a real dad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that is that as far as all I can say right now in terms of the Knuckle Show. I'm hoping uh, they... Uh, they just really surprise the hell out of us when it comes out. But all we're really doing right now is just uh, making general assumptions from one little picture in a synopsis. We didn't say Tinka Sumter's in this as well. Did, is there anyone else in there that they kind of mentioned is coming back? So we have Wade and Maddie coming back for some reason. Hmm. I'd imagine we're probably going to get most of the movie humans just cameoed at least at some point. Yeah. But you know, we're just like, oh, well, they're there, I guess. That's fine. <laughs> All right. So that aside, we got Rovio out of the way. We got the Knuckle Show out of the way. Um, I'm not big on this stuff, but I, I know Wayne in particular had some opinions at this. But they also dropped uh, a fairly big announcement. Sonic Legos are coming in full force this time. No, I think the only time we ever had Sonic Legos was... Lego Dimensions and that one uh, Green Hill set. But now we have a full on, uh, I don't know, getting bigger about it, like Mario, like multiple sets. I guess, yeah, I guess yeah. I, I, I do have some thoughts about it. I do want to preface it by saying, like, this is more of like personal preference sort of thing. And this isn't me just saying that this is downright bad. I'm not crazy about the look of the new sets. I thought the commercial was cute. I, I like that they gave Eggman an actual minifigure this time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like the way they look. They're too round. They don't look like Lego. I, it, you know, it, it just... Eh. I like the blockiness of it. It's kind of like the appeal... You know when you see like somebody make some like really... 
I know this isn't your y'all's kind of game, but you might still be able to relate when you see somebody like recreate something really cool. But like in Minecraft, the blockiness of it kind of has like an appeal in and of itself. Yeah. I, yeah. Where like that aesthetic being turned into something that's supposed to mimic like curvature and everything versus uh, these these sets like there's so many like round curves and, and spheres and and uh, and stuff. And I'm just like, it, it works. But at that point, it might as well just be another plastic play set. Like, why is it Lego? It looks like Duplo. Uh, it does. It does kind of look like Duplo. And I, I'm a little disappointed, if only because I adore that Green Hill Zone set. And it had, like, you know, the circle for the loop. But at least that's, like, a, a pre-existing block. And I, it's, like, the one part of it that's circular versus the rest of it that still kind of has that blocky nature. Uh, where everything feels rounded out. Like, even the plane feels almost bulbous. Yeah. Uh, like the tornado feels so smoothed out. Uh, I yeah. do want that Tails minifigure though, so I'm buying it. <laughs> um, but uh, I was kind of hoping when I put together that Green Hill Zone set, uh, which was a, a ton of fun, I I saw what they were doing with like um, they had little bits at the end that made it look like this could connect to other sets that they might make in the future. Like, oh, hey, we might make a chemical plant or, you know, an Angel Island uh, themed one or something like a Carnival Night or <laughs> Studiopolis or, or something that would kind of fit with with the Lego Ideas version of of a Sonic Lego set. And, and we could expand on that and you could make like no. a like a long diorama that would be that'd be super cool no you're gonna get green hill again yeah <laughs> it's fine <laughs> they are still cool uh they're they're neat uh, kids are going to love them they're uh, like they, this is definitely something where it's just like yeah uh uh if i had a kid that was like super into sonic and, and lego like that would be an instant purchase it's good that these are being made and i don't think that they're bad it's just not what i wanted out of more like Sonic Lego. Uh, so, yeah, that that's where I'm at with it. No, yeah. that's fair. It's understandable. Um, it's not exactly Lego, but they did show uh, Jack Specific's got some more stuff coming out fairly soon. I mean, we know Wave 14 is going to include Cream and Infinite. Wave 15 is going to be happening. We don't know what's in it. I'm gamma, 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 gamma. And I know Bad Nick Mechanics and posting some stuff. Um, I guess there's a play set going to be coming for both uh, the Death Egg Zone and it looks like also for um, uh, is it Stardust Speedway. Yeah. Interesting. So, Ooh. Stardust. That's cool. Yeah. Two more fucking, I mean, a lot more generation you know stuff, but that's pretty cool. You know what occurred to me when I was playing the combat challenges in Frontiers? Uh, you know in Death Egg Zone in uh, Three Knuckles, uh, when you have those those little things, they're like the tubes that just like you go spiraling through. And I'm like, what are what are the point of these? No. Um, mm -hmm. Frontiers brought those back and I, I didn't really make the connection my first time playing through. But when you're fighting those like uh, I guess they're the, the spiders, I don't know, they're the four legged things on uh, I want to say Chaos Island. Sure. Um, and you're like uh, you're diving down um, to uh, to hit them and everything. You actually go through a couple of those, and I was playing the combat challenges, and I was like, "Oh shoot, that's what that's from. That's neat. That's a that's a cool little pull. I didn't re recognize that at first. Yeah, I didn't re that's a that is a good reference there. I did not think about that. That is really cool. I was just thinking like, oh, this is kind of like the the tails fight from Adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, when you're when you're diving through the air, you go through like a little circle, and then mm -hmm. it'll send you like through like mid air loops and everything yeah. like that. And I'm just like, oh, huh, yeah. No, that's, that's very that true. Is. That's very true. Uh, do you think that the Death Egg Zone is going to be Sonic and Knuckles, or is it going to be probably Sonic 2? Sonic 2. Yeah, I would probably hope be Sonic... Sonic... I, I, I want them to stop pretending Sonic 3 and Knuckles doesn't exist. Yeah, me too. And, like, yep. what are they even going to do for a playset <laughs> for Sonic 2, if they use that as the reference? Uh, Mecha Sonic, I guess? I mean, I, they already got those toys out, so that I mean, that's why it makes sense to me because we have the Death Egg Robot and we have uh, Silver Sonic, Metal Sonic. Or, oh God, I made a video and it still confuses me. Um, I I still think they should have had like a a Mecha Sonic inside the De Death Egg Robot at the end of Sonic Two, the movie. That'd been cute. That'd have been rad. Didn't have to be metal, but 
That would have been fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think if they keep the franchise going on movie form, I think we're going to get metal at some point. I have no doubt about yeah. that. I, I remember I, I remember belly aching a little bit um, at, at one point where I was just like, you know, the the comics are kind of running the, themselves in circles right now. And I feel like I've seen the same plot kind of on loop a little bit and yeah. I'm seeing metal a lot more and I hope I don't get tired of metal. I picked up I'm not going to say anything about the plot, but I did pick up the the most recent issue of uh, IDW Sonic this week. Metal just shows up. He's just there. Mm -hmm. And it still put a smile on my face. So I'm like, nah, I'm not getting tired of this guy anytime soon. Yeah, (laughs) I I love seeing him. He's he's such a good boy. No, I I, I mean, like I've uh, I still grew up with not a lot of metal. So just seeing him all over the place now, I, I don't I don't mind. I just love seeing him. Yeah. So. That that's it's a good me. change of pace. I mean, it's it's just, it's just not too much. Like I, I know what I like from this franchise, and I'm gonna see Sonic a lot, and I like Sonic, and I'm gonna hopefully see Metal and these other characters a lot because I like them. Cool. Yeah, I ain't above it. It's rad. I remember um, being a kid and being excited when Heroes came out that we were going to be able to get Metal back, and now he's showing up. Almost guaranteed in everything except he didn't show he didn't show up in Frontiers, but he was in Generations and Forces and he's in the comic a lot. It's it's nice. I'm not as big, I'm not as much of a fan of metal as you are, but I I can understand it being very very nice. It is um it is funny because I was reading I had to catch up on uh, the last uh this this most recent comic and the one before it. And again, not going to share plot details here, but Nick, I could hear your voice recapping like, and then she takes the thing and does this. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh man. Oh god. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm looking forward to that speed reading, by the way. <laughs> I'll be honest. I've uh um I've IDW is kind enough to reach out to me. I actually they're they're gonna be giving me review copies so I can actually take a look at it. Oh. I've not I've not read anything so far. Okay, okay. But like I you know, I'm gonna just up front tell folks like, hey, just so you know, like this is a review copy, so I had time to really kind of get my thoughts together on this. Um, doesn't affect yeah. my thoughts or anything, but also like, like I haven't read the last couple issues either, so I really need to get caught up myself. You know, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually excited really for you, man. Oh, thank you. Him. Yeah, that dude, that's super awesome. I, I and I think you're gonna get a kick out of what the the comics are doing right now. I thought it was just gonna be feeling very fillery, mm-hmm. uh, but it quickly amps up, and and they're doing more with it than I thought they would and um I'm I'm loving the character interactions like that, that have been coming out of it. Yeah, I've been I've been hearing good things from folks. I think personally they're releasing way too many preview pages for everything. Um, I, I would agree on that, yeah. Just like I feel like even though I haven't read these these books yet, like I feel like I already know what's happening just because of it's just all the stuff on Twitter. Like there's just so many it's not even like people spoiling stuff. It's just like, oh we got five new pages of preview. I'm like there's like twenty one pages, guys. What are you doing? That's a quarter I, of your book. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, there's a there's a couple of panels of Rouge I wish I had seen in the comic book before I saw on Twitter. I'll say that. Yeah. Mm. So, but I still need I still need to read it and see what my thoughts are there. But I've oh, I did there's... have that. Mm? I was gonna say I did have that feeling with previous issues where like when I read through them after having seen the previews on Twitter, I went, well, I got a little more than what the previews had. Uh, yeah, a, a little. No. I I will say I, uh, sir, is that there is one thing and and in, in the recent stuff that I think would make you happy. Yeah, it, from the previews yeah. I've seen, absolutely. Okay, so I definitely go give that a shot when you get a chance. Yeah. Um, Just read them sooner rather than later, so you can experience it like as intended. Yeah, no, a thousand percent. Let's see. I'll definitely be. I'll definitely be taking a look at those probably tomorrow, right Hell before yeah. I uh, right before I have to hop onto like stream proper. So the last little bit of news here I've I have in terms of Sonic, like we had a surprising amount to go over, and we've been rolling through it real quick. It's a shame Pup again. Pup is not here because I feel like he's probably the only one that's played it so far. I might try and stream this later today though. But uh, it looks like the silver section of Project 06 just dropped and apparently it's amazing that's what i've been hearing as well Mm -hmm. um not only like from a not only from a gameplay perspective but apparently the devs 
not to spoil anything that's in there, but apparently the devs have like added in a bunch of Easter eggs for fans of the series into it as well. And they've done it in done it in subtle ways. Uh, but I'm I'm happy for what I have seen so far. Not going to spoil the things that I've seen, though. Hmm. Well, Wayne will be very happy is what I'll say. I'll I'll be happy about what was in Project 06. Yes. Temples. Why are you ruining it for yourself, bro? I actually don't know what's in there. I have no I, idea. I want I want to know. <laughs> well, it, it, how do, how is this accessed exactly? In you just the download it off their website. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was like a mod for like a, uh, did I already have to have like a pre-existing file of the original game? Is it like based off of the original? Is it like a standalone? No, it's, it's standalone. Okay. They, it's, it's built from the ground up using all the assets from the original, but none of the code. Oh, well, good. Cause the code was string cheese. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. String was, cheese is still tasty. Don't sell it short like that, bro. <laughs> it was spaghetti. <laughs> um, it was spaghetti. It was, Hold on, I gotta go like growl it out real quick. Oh, I found there. Yeah, no, uh, that's definitely something Pup does a better job with, I think, compared to the rest of us here in terms of staying on top of fan projects. Something I've always wanted yeah. to do, and I, I gotta say, like, the more I see from 06, I, I the more I actually want to check it out. So I'm I'm probably gonna give that a shot again. Don't know if I'm gonna do that later today on a stream or or what's gonna happen, but definitely got to give it a shot at this point. Absolutely. I I I think sometime next week I might try to stream because uh, I think I've mentioned it on the show, but like somebody made a Jet Set Radio mod for Sonic Adventure. Yeah. I'm oh, saying that. and I I need to play that. That's that looks so great. Yeah. Oh man. It's amazing just how little we can talk about some of this news without without Pup here and his enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, it's like he adds a lot to the show or something. Oh, that piece of garbage. Happy birthday. <laughs> From the grave. I think he's actually in the chat right now, so happy birthday, you giant nerd. Yeah, God's sakes. I thought you were going out to celebrate your birthday. Still can't stay away. What's funny is I didn't believe him at first when he said in the group chat it was his birthday, so I had to double check and I saw on Facebook and it was just like, oh, it is his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a joy. Jo um, yeah, that's about all I've got so far. The only other things I really have in terms of stuff I've wanted to talk about is just not really Sonic related. I just I can't get Nintendo off the brain right now. I've been. It's just been amazing, like, just how miserable of a company these guys can be, and people will still defend the hell out of them, man. Like, yeah, it's driving yeah. me a little bit crazy. I, I have feelings about all of that, because I'm like, yeah, people, people have brought up some points where they're just like, oh, yeah, but he was, like, selling these mod chips that could, like, break your console and everything like that, and I'm just like, okay, yeah, he also went to prison? So, so like, shouldn't that be enough? He's, yeah, so he's context, context for people's sake here. Um, okay. So uh, Nintendo uh, recently uh, just laid the hammer down on this dude who was just as Wayne said he was working for like this large. Is it a company? It's like this small like I mean I guess you could call it a company where they'd bond machines and I guess sometimes they would break them. Yeah, I think that I think that's what it was. I honestly, yeah, yeah, because the context is important, but it's just like the the te the details aside. The result is that Nintendo has sued him for such a large sum of money that he will essentially be like forced into servitude for this company for the rest of his working life. And yeah. it's just too much. Like it, it's egregious. It's it's greedy and it's uh it's just kind of fucked, man. It's just there like, to set an example. Put it. Yeah, it's just there to set an example like not to mess with corporations, which I kind of feels a bit problematic. <laughs> It just really goes to show you just how big capitalism is, and you just can't mess with it. You're not allowed to. You can't yeah. do anything. Like, you don't matter. It's gross. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to look up some details here because, it again, that context is super important. And I did read it the other day, and it just kind of all fell out of my head because I'm a tired, tired, tired old man. Um, and I'm, I'm, also, I'm also, like, I, I, I feel bad a little bit for... for calling them out on it because it's just like I'm I'm also a game series of the kingdom day one I know that like I was first in line for the Mario movie like I'm I'm feeding into these people 
Yeah. But I don't like everything that they do, and, and this sucks. Yeah. So I'm just going to read the story as I have it here to show you folks. And sorry, this is not Sonic related. We just kind of rolled through the news fairly quickly here. Yeah. I do have another second thing I can bring up later, though. Fair enough. Um, so Nintendo hacker forced to pay them for life after. This is a that's a rough title. Anyway, uh, Nintendo <laughs> hacker Gary Bowser, for real, that's his name, has been released Damn. from prison after 40 months, but must pay the company 25 to 30 percent of his income for the rest of his life after operating hacky website um, Max Console. Um, so this is from Dextero.com and they go on to write team executor originally created mod chips and hacking tools for various consoles. They are also the masterminds behind the Nintendo switch custom firmware SXOS, which allows users to pirate games in 2020, the release of SXOX and switch mod chips caused some ire at the house of Mario. The chips were sold by team executor and published and promoted their products on websites such as Max Console. There you could find how to use and where to purchase mod chips. In 2020, Canadian Gary Bowser, who ran Max Con the rant who ran the Max Console website, was extradited to the US following his arrest in the Dominican Republic. According to reports, Bowser willfully participated in a cyber criminal enterprise that hacked leading gaming consoles that developed, manufactured, and marketed and sold a variety of circumvention devices that allowed the enterprise's customers to play pirated versions of copyrighted video games. Bowser pleaded guilty to the charges in November of 2021. He was later incarcerated at the Federal Detention Center in Seattle, but has now attained an early release from prison, citing good behavior as one of the primary reasons. Currently, he is awaiting a return to his home country of Canada, according to a recent video interview. With $14.5 million in damages to his name, Bowser may have been released from prison, but the losing looming specter of Nintendo still stands tall. As Bowser explains in the above video, he will have to pay the company back on a monthly basis, sending 25 to 30% of his growth mo gross monthly income to Nintendo. So far, less than 200 of the four total 14.5 million has been paid off. It's likely Bowser will never be able to fully pay back the charges in his lifetime. And that goes on to say soon Nintendo will enjoy the release of its latest flagship Zelda title tears of the kingdom. Um, though piracy on Nintendo Switch still runs rampant, it's unclear whether or not the incarceration of Bowser and the hunting of hackers has proven an effective tool against software piracy. So it's not. No, and it never yeah. will be. And everyone like going to like like no, he had it coming. Like, like what is wrong with you no, guys? Fuck up. Fuck off. Hey, never, yeah. Don't side with the giant corporation, you fucking morons. You you can even, I feel, make an argument for, yeah, there should be some form of punishment. Legally, you can you can justify that. Not this shit. I, 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 put, I put a post on Twitter about it, and then everyone's just like, bro, you don't think he should be jailed? I'm like, where, did you idiots miss the $14.5 million? Dollars? <laughs> yeah, he did his time. Like, that is, that is insane. That's not absolutely to mention, insane. Not to mention, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This gets into a lot of ethical conversations about what you're allowed to manufacture in your own home if you are allowed to modify your own hardware. Because, like, this um, Nintendo lost a lawsuit about this in Paris ages ago uh, with the Nintendo DS with Ace cards and M3 cards. Like, Nintendo has been fighting this battle for years, and sometimes they get to do shit like this. Sometimes they lose. It's better when they lose. It's better for consumers when they lose. Yeah. It's better for people in general when they lose. But when, when Nintendo wins, they do shit like this. Make an example of somebody so that he's the story whispered in the back alleys of forums every single time you bring up something like, oh, I just want... I want to be able to play games for free, or I want to be able to do this, that, and the other thing. Here's the thing. Gabe Newell made a statement a long time ago, and I 100% agree with the statement. Piracy is not a replacement for what exists currently in the market. Piracy basically just happens when the market is not meeting consumer demands correctly. If the market is not responding well enough, if games are too expensive, if games are too hard to get a hold of, when shit like that happens, piracy increases. And that's kind of been evidenced by the success of Steam in general. 
Like, he wasn't wrong when he said that. Um, most of the people who pirate games were not the people who were going to be buying those games with their hard-earned cash in the first place. So you're, you're not even really losing that money there. The corporation, their entire goal is to try to protect their IP irrespective of what lengths they can take to do it. 14 million in damages, which again would be from people who were not going to be buying those games in the first place anyway, because people who have the money to buy the games just buy the games, is fucking stupid. Anybody that sides with a company that is doing that, I hope every game you purchase becomes $150 one day. But sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's not completely in the moral correct here. I'm not going to say that he's not, but at some point you have to ask yourself, like, look, like those are the kind of damages like one company expects from another company. Um, yeah. Not from an individual. Not from an individual. Yeah. That's, that's not money most people see in their lifetimes. And it's not okay to, it's just not okay to do that. Like they have all the power here and now they're just. No, they've grabbed him by the balls for the rest of his life. Yeah, is what they've done there. This is, I mean, this is the kind of shit like like dictators do, you know. Like this it, it is really, it really is like servitude. It really is just like making an example out of this guy as a power move. It, it's it's a fear tactic, and it's gross. Yeah, no, every, like, and again, the thing is, when you're looking at this, just as a crime. You have to ask yourself, and I know there's going to be somebody in the comment section that's going to say some dumb shit about what I'm about to say, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. You have to ask yourself who the victim is. Any crime needs a victim. Who is the victim of this crime? Again, people who were going to be getting pirated games weren't going to be buying those games in the first place, so actual physical stock isn't being taken, account, taken out. And on top of that, this is modification of systems that were already purchased. So again, wh where is the actual victim here? It's a, it's a made up fucking set of crimes at that point. Yeah. Well, then again, most, then again, all crimes are, but that's beside, that's a different conversation. Yeah. 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 Gaming is fun. <laughs> isn't it just, isn't it yeah. just, <laughs> Is it isn't reality great? No. <laughs> no. You don't like the you don't like the lot we've been given? I don't, man. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well but I but I hear it is quite easy to mod your 3DS. Oh, I heard it's you know it's easier it's, it's even easier to mod your Vita. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Like hey, uh, so so people joke about like how easy it is to uh people uh, friends of ours uh joke about how easy it is to mod your 3ds it is so much easier to mod your video you literally like, pull up a web page and download something uh 3ds you actually do have to go through some steps where you, you gotta you gotta read a forum on like what exactly you're doing and everything vita takes like five minutes yeah. <laughs> oh aiden brought up a good point playing into the right to repair issues we're still facing yeah pup brought this up too when we were talking about this the other day he was like yeah because like people are like like going on this guy's case, like, yeah, because sometimes these mod chips would brick systems. I'm like, I mean, yeah, just like you're going to claim this dude, you know, is taking a risk by messing with Nintendo, and he certainly did. Like, you do still play a bit of a risk when you go mod your own machine, especially if you don't know what yeah. you're doing. But on top of that, like, like Bob had pointed out, like, so where, where's the lawsuit where Nintendo has to pay for all the busted Joy Cons? Uh, yeah, they won that. Yeah. Yep. Which is some bullshit. Yeah. That's that's well, insane. What's funny, too, like when you say like, hey, you you run the risk when you mod your own system of it bricking. You know what the weird ethical flip flop is there, Nick? Mm. Do you want to know what makes the the risk of bricking happen in the first place? Nine times out of ten. What's that? The console manufacturer. Oh, fun geez. story. Uh, fun story. <laughs> so I you you know that I, I mod Wii's. That's a, a thing that I've that I've done software wise, not hardware wise. Um, it's anybody who's ever modded a Wii, you're familiar with things like the Twilight hack and letter bombing, and these are just methods we've used to modify Wii systems. Pretty public knowledge. Most people know how to do it if if they if they've looked into it. 
It's not super hard. Okay, cool. So, um, there's a thing you can do on a modded Wii, which is changing the Wii's front page, like just how it looks. Because the original Wii does not have the abilities that like the 3DS did where you could change the themes of your, uh, of your console. Um, so in order to get themes for your console, which is a now a fairly basic feature that the Switch still can't do for some reason, <laughs> you would go in and you would mod your OS a little bit. Now, here's this funny thing that would happen with the Wii, okay? Once you have modded your operating system, every update... Luckily, this can't happen anymore because we don't receive updates on, this, on the Wii anymore. But every update had a chance of bricking your system. And the reason this would happen is some mods would have to change the iOS serial number of your system. And whenever an update would happen to your system, which, by the way, they would put updates on game discs as well. So when you bought a new game, it would automatically up your Wii, uh, update your Wii, even if your Wii was not connected to the Internet. This is what happened with me with Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles. That's how I discovered this on accident. Um, so what would happen is the update would run and the update checks your Wii's, for, uh, your Wii's serial. It sees... The serial is not what it's expecting. Now, as anybody who's ever messed with operating systems before can tell you, that doesn't mean jack shit. The serial that is on the system and the serial that is attached to the software itself, they don't need to be aligned. They have never needed to be aligned on any system that has ever existed in the history of fuck all. However, Nintendo, in their omniscience, decided that no, the serial of the OS needs to match what was installed from the factory. And if it doesn't, it automatically bricks your system when an update happens. So you have to sideload games through Gecko OS. I learned that the hard way. But if you didn't sideload games through Gecko OS, the auto update would run on any new game you would play, and your Wii system would be destroyed, and you would have this lovely uh, brick that couldn't do anything. Technically, you could kind of flash it and fix it with flash memory, uh, but really, most of the time, it just became useless. And this was a thing that should never have existed, because in any, not just console, but any computer manufactured by anyone with a sane brain, this has never been an issue. Oh, you have to reinstall Windows OS? You can do that a billion fucking times, and it will never matter. But if the wires are crossed on the Wii, they know you've modded your system, they brick the whole damn thing. So I love that when people say, oh, well, there's a risk to, to modding your system because it could brick your system. You're right, it could brick your system because that's a fail-safe the developers put in to prevent you from hacking, which means that's not even something that we should have had to deal with in the first fucking place. That's a bit of malevolence from the fucking company. And this is coming from somebody who has done this and had this happen to him. So that's where the spike's coming from. And you still see anyway. people you still see people like defending that too though, right? Like, oh, that's Nintendo's machine. Like, okay, I thought I bought it though. No the fuck it's not. I bought it. Yeah. I did not I did not rent my Nintendo Wii from the company store. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. So I mean I no hope you enjoyed working for the sawmill for the rest of your life, going to the store that the sawmill owns, going to the you know, going to your bed that you rent from the sawmill. Oh, wait, that's illegal now. There's a reason we do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all just kind of gross. And I understand the moral gray area of it all, but like, yeah, it's just disgusting. It really is. Is that even hacking? Isn't that just modding? And like, yeah, I guess Femren's got a point there too. I mean, like those, those two terms get a little bit loosey goosey. I guarantee Nintendo does not give a shit. They don't want you messing with no. their, their stuff. So no, they, they there's a reason that Nintendo like if you, if you ever want to go down a rabbit hole, go down the hardware modification lawsuits that Nintendo has been going through in the past 15 years. One of the most prolific ones was one in Paris having to do with the Nintendo DS. It was about ace cards and shit like it's it's a rabbit hole to go down to see the lengths at which their lawyers will go to defend absolute horse shit. No. Yeah, I, and Nintendo, let's be real, has always decided to uh, spice up their pride a little bit with a with a healthy dose of arrogance. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, 
And I love people like like defending Nintendo with like the Monster Energy, which is stupid. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like that's dumb. But like y- you guys have to understand, like they do the exact same kind of shit. Like these, they're they're all just greedy assholes. All of them. They want to own everything. Nope. They want to own language that they've never created themselves. They want to own every little part of your life. It's gross. Here's the thing about corporations. The job of any corporation, the, the goal, the end goal, is to create a monopoly. Their goal is to consume all competition around them so that they are the one-stop shop. Sorry, boys, now, give me just a moment. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes, a, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes we get this, you know, lovely little balance where Nintendo and Microsoft and Sony uh, all own their different shares of the market and thus compete with each other. But then when that happens, companies like Nintendo carve out their own area of the market instead of actually competing. Because let's be honest, until the Steam Deck came out, there was no competition for the Switch. Like it, it existed in its own marketing bubble to be bought alongside other consoles or PCs as a supplement as opposed to in competition with them, whereas the Xbox and PlayStation were in direct competition with one another. Companies whose goal it is is either to eliminate or subvert the competition at all times can never and will never be your friend because you will always be a means to an end for them. Don't stand them. Be better. Oh, here, here. Well said. That goes for Sonic too. That goes for Sonic. <laughs> Sorry, babies. That goes for everything. They're not your friends, no matter how nice the social media team is. If if uh, Sega was big enough, they would uh, they'd be assholes too. Yep. We're the just... only reason, like, what was it? Like, I, I want to say maybe like fifty episodes ago, we had a conversation about the Switch on this show, and we mentioned that like Nintendo is good when they're hungry, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sega's good when they're hungry. D- just. When a company is starving and they are desperately needing your dollar, not expecting your dollar, needing your dollar, they perform infinitely better. Un- uh, Uncle Derek from uh, Stop Skeletons from Fighting just uploaded a video today uh, about the DK bongos, and he was talking about this was the result of Nintendo being put in a corner. Like, this was when they had to push themselves to be creative, and they they made this silly little controller that is just like one of the most fun things on that system highly recommend that video by the way it was a good time um but yeah it's just like uh it it made them get creative and it, they were able to spend more time on like actually innovating in fun ways instead of just like being what nintendo is now yeah i think that can go both ways i think like when a company's big enough they have more opportunity to get creative um, we have seen that every now and then. I'd say it's, as much as I dislike Squirt nowadays. Oh, you two dogs, knock it off! Oh, hello! <laughs> God's sakes, the crickets bothering ghosts. Um, I mean, like I was, who made a video recently? I don't remember, but they were just talking about like what Square was doing in in the realm of the PS1 era, and like yeah. they took that newfound success to get really wild and creative with a lot of their ideas, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, Nintendo was kind of desperate. Like, they did kind of uh, close up shot way too early with the GameCube, I feel. But, it, I mean, it did eventually lead to the DS, which was, you know, a success in a very creative way. And I do appreciate that Nintendo at least learned that kind of lesson in terms of hardware. Like, let's be creative with hardware in terms of, like, all their quirks and everything. Kind of wish yeah. they had more power with them. But, yeah. I mean, the Nintendo ethos for a while has been innovate on known technology as opposed to pioneering new technology. But yeah, I mean, when they have a chance to like just put the hammer down, it it's, it gets kind of obnoxious. Like, there's a reason why there's such a big, a lot, so much chatter with the Microsoft acquiring Activision and Sony trying everything in their power to get in their way. <laughs> have you guys been reading yeah. up on any of that shit? I have. I've not been paying as much attention to it as I probably should, seeing as I'm a I'm a Blizzard fan, so that's kind of wrapped up in the Activision shit anyway. Mm-hmm. So, but no, what's all going on with that? No, just like the, I don't know, there's lawsuits being thrown Microsoft's way in terms of like, just saying Activision is just, it's too big of a company for them to acquire. Like, they're going to have too much of a stranglehold on the video game division uh, if they acquire Call of Duty. Um, and, I mean, everything else that comes with with Activision, right? Like, Blizzard is a part of that, so that means World of Warcraft and all uh overwatch all that stuff 
and not to forget yep. their their mobile branding as well. So Candy Crush and all that stuff, which is gargantuan too in its own right. And Crash Bandicoot. Y- yep. It's kind of like and Crash it's kinda Bandicoot. Like, it's kind of like Tencent. Um, Tencent has League of Legends, and they own a big uh, share of stock in Epic Games now as well. Like, but that's a little different. That's not full on acquisition. That's just having holdings. Yeah, but I forgot which podcast I was listening to that did bring them up. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, if if Microsoft doesn't buy them, I mean, Activision's clearly uh, in the market to be sold. So if it's not them, then it's probably Tencent. It's not a good, not a good future for anybody. <laughs> I'm getting from any of this. No, um, you don't want the Disneyfication of the uh, video game market. You don't. Which is weird, and I think we didn't really touch on this. Just to, just to shut a loop it right back around to one of our first topics. I don't think any of us expected Sega to be acquiring anybody, even if it is Sega's Sammy, you know, the parent company. Yeah. Like, I don't think anybody was expecting even Rovio, which is not as powerful as it was 10 years ago, is still making, you know, a good amount of money every year. Which I guess isn't entirely unprecedented. They did acquire Atlas at one point, didn't they? Yeah, and Atlas is still chugging along just fine. That's the thing about oh, Sega. Yeah. Like, they're they're doing just fine as a company. I mean, like, when you look at a Sonic game, it looks like, oh, these guys are just... They barely have anything to put together to make a video game. But then you look at Yakuza, you look at Football Manager, you look at Total War. Then you look at the Sonic movies. Like, no, they're not Nintendo huge, but they're still... They're still decently they're relevant. sized. Yeah. Yeah, so they've got power in this market. Yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah, everyone's just buying everybody else. You got an idea? Well, somebody's gonna buy. Oh man, sorry to have such a dour, a dour tone on everything today, guys. My apologies. <laughs> oh, it's I mean, fine. it's fine. It steps it steps into some areas that I'm a little more read up on, which is fine for me. <laughs> no, I love I love hearing you get passionate about a topic. You went into that. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That was good shit. Um, but I. I don't know. It's it's kind of annoying because like we saw we saw this all happen with Disney already. Like Disney owns sixty percent of of all just viewable media right now. Yeah. So just kind of hoping that this doesn't happen with the gaming market, especially since we already have the mobile gaming market as what it is. And I know there's always going to be corporate stands that are like, "Hey, but they're making a lot of money." Okay, cool. Are are you making money off that? Do you have stocks and dividends in them? No. Then why do you give a shit? Yeah. I remember being that person when I was a kid uh, as like a just a w- big Nintendo fan when it was like Wii versus 360 versus, you know, PS3. And we actually did, you know, the Internet was a thing. So we had the ability to look up the sales of consoles and stuff. So we would always bring up stuff like, oh, well, the PS2 sold this much. OK, but the PS3 didn't do that. And just like those those conversations just go on forever. As an adult, looking back on that, I'm like, wow. None of that fucking mattered. None of that mattered at all. Not a single person from Nintendo will ever know my name. And you know what? It's probably better that way. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, oh, we might have a little bit more Sonic news. Oh? Uh, Did it not happen an hour after the show like usual? <laughs> I mean, like, in the middle of the show. I mean, not entirely news, but... um, They did just show off another one of these... Uh, these covers for IDW Sonic issue 63. And we did see before that there was like a new character uh, with the, uh, I forgot what his name is. The, that possum dude, that possum dude from IDW. Oh, I know who you're talking oh. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he is showing up on yet another cover here. And I don't know what he's supposed to be, but he's got, he's got some uh, nice uh, Tim's on <laughs> his brown gloves. And his little fluffy ears. So I'm not sure exactly what this dude's supposed to be. Like a badger or wolverine or something like that. But he's uh, mm. showing up on the cover. And a lot of people were thinking, like, this is probably just a mimic. I guess that could still be the case. But, yeah. What was Mimic's ensemble uh, in Bad Guys? Like, what was he wearing? Aside from just the... I remember the cloak. I mean, not not too much else. Honestly, he mostly just does the cloak thing and some gloves and stuff like that. Um, yeah, like the easiest tell that it's uh, that it is mimic is if he has those suction cups on his hands, and I guess these gloves could easily enough cover that up. And he, this new character does have brown eyes, which was another telltale sign. 
So, yeah, so Gunner is saying that that is Mimic in Disguise. I don't know. I've not read the actual uh, things. I don't know who they are. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to read the comments here real quick. But, yeah. This could be a new character or it could be Mimic. Who can say? I wouldn't mind it being Mimic. I don't. I don't hate him, and I don't think he's fully played out yet. Yeah, I guess. But, I mean, they've also had a pretty good run on new characters so far. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have yet another new character in the series. But... Well, it's not, it's not bad to have, you know, more new ones when they've already, like, they've been doing really well with them. But I do... Like, especially their villains. Especially the villains. I like returning villains that are not just Eggman again. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens there. We'll have some more comic news in in the next few months here. And everyone is saying that, yeah, they're saying that's definitely Mimic. So maybe not an exactly brand new character. <laughs> well, sadness. Oh, that's fine. I mean, they... Uh... But I'm, o no, no, I'm okay no, with no, that, no, though. No, 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 no. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, Cricket, you horrible dog. <laughs> what did Cricket do? She just demolished the Velociraptor. For fuck's sake, Cricket. Oh. Man, I had this since I was a kid. You terrible little dog. I've got extras. It's fine. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just can't ever not keep an eye on this dog. God sake. Yeah, sorry. If I if I sound down, guys, uh just, just get behind the scenes. Um you might remember a while ago I said Ghost doesn't have cancer. He he, he definitely does. Uh, we just didn't take the right the right test, so I've been a bit down for the last couple days because, uh, yeah, the original diagnosis is still in effect. So just hanging out with him as much as I can, and then I just keep looking at this other dog and like, oh, this is what I'm stuck with. Oh, you're the... <laughs> like, Ghost is so... I keep forgetting, like, how good of a dog he is when I have Cricket here. Well, I always have to watch because she's going to grab something and chew it to death. Never have to worry about Ghost getting into the trash or, like, doing anything miserable. But, um... Cricket just sucks. And Ghost just looking at me like a sweet boy. So yeah, <laughs> sorry. If you if you hear me down for the remainder of this year, that's why. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, that awkward little note there aside. Um I don't really have much else in terms of Sonic news to really kind of go over. Should we uh just head over to Super Chats? Oh yeah, so. we could probably go ahead and do that. Alright. So Let's see here. I'm going to head over there. And thank you all for everyone who's donated. We appreciate it. Um, I'm going to kick things off with our good Paul Jamal. <laughs> oh, wait. We do have one above that from last week after uh, the cutoff. Sonic Fan 1661 sent us a dollar. Thank you. Uh, Jamal. Yeah, no, wait, wait, wait. What, what do you mean, what? Burger. God damn it. Uh, Jamal <laughs> sends $2. Happy B Theory weekend, Nick X Sally Cannon. Oh, well, you're damn right. Well done, Jamal. <laughs> Might as well be at this point, Cricket, honestly. You should not be eating. No, you know what? I don't care if it's already ruined. That's a bad example to set. That's a bad girl. You have your own choice. Next one we have. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Next one we have here is from Way Past Cool Kid. Thank you for the 199. Tomorrow's 422, 420, the sequel. I'm really high. <laughs> <laughs> well done way past cool kid our right, wayne good good we got mr sp wait uh mr sp with five dollars <laughs> nick was just <laughs> nick was just trying to match his audio quality to his favorite video game console the sega saturn <laughs> Zingo. That might be my favorite console. It doesn't even have my favorite library, but man, that system just fascinates the hell out of me. I you I smile every so... time I... Mm -hmm. I was about to say, you seemed so just like genuinely happy when me and Pup were playing on the Saturns. I'm so proud of you guys. I was so very proud of you I, guys. I look at, at the Saturn I bought, and I smile, even though I do not have a single game for it and <laughs> cannot play it. <laughs> Something charming about that weird fucking box, but it is what it is. All right. Uh, uh, Nick, I think you're up with uh, coffee. I'm not used to just having three people here. My God. Yeah, yeah, it's. Oof. 
That's weird. It moves quick. It does. Nick, I'm donating for the first time to the show just to voice my unbridled disappointment on your hat-based opinions. Well, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank you for the money. We'll apologize for happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Cirrus. Fly, uh, Flyer three F. Thank you for the five dollars. Nick wants Knuckles to get a sunburn. He's got to protect his dumb little head. <laughs> he's already red. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. All right. Uh, Wayne, is it your turn? All right. Uh, we got Sonic Fan 1661 with $5. We definitely need more slice of life with the main cast. I'd like to see them just being able to exist without peril once in a while. And yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's just like uh, these are story centric characters and every, you, you know, for. It's one thing if, like, you're doing a comic book and you want to break things up with a little more slice of life. But if you're doing a movie with a much uh, or, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, a d direct to TV, whatever you want to direct to streaming special or something like that, you do need conflict. Um, yeah. So and, and Knuckles story is just definitely not completely wrapped up by the end of Sonic 2. Like, there's still more to it. Like, there was a reason he was going after the Master Emerald. Yeah. Why? And then just left it in a lunch cooler. Yeah. That's not the knuckles I know. What's going on there? <laughs> so uh, let's go on to Sonic Fan 1661, $2. Even Sonic yep. isn't immune to consumerism. Well, no, Sonic doesn't exist without consumerism. He's he's a direct response to a different type of consumerism. Yeah. yeah. Even Sonic is not immune to beef stroganoff. I, I guess. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm I'm very worried about it now. Oh, well, you shouldn't be. I told you not to. I that's listen, you know what? I trust you as a friend. Don't do that. That's a mistake. Don't do that. Don't do it. I have I have traveled across the country for you multiple times. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've gone a long way out of our way for you and your bitch ass. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> I mean, I guess, like, God damn it. as much as we whine, I, I don't think any of us have anything on Puff, so, you know. I, you know true, what? True. He, has tra he has traveled farther, co just consummately for all of us, the bastard. Yeah, none of us have been to his house, which he does not currently have, as he likes to keep saying he's homeless. <laughs> Happy birthday, Puff. So, <laughs> I mean, we could, we could, we can get him a box. We can get him a nice new Nintendo, Nintendo Switch box. No, no, no. Nintendo would sue him for using the box incorrectly. <laughs> Don't modify the box. Don't modify the box. <laughs> Hello, um, yes, this is Nintendo. We sell the game Animal Crossing, a game all about modifying what you've been getting. No, we don't like the irony in that. They would kill people if they could. I have no <laughs> doubt in my mind they would just kill people to set an example if they could. If they could literally have like Nintendo ninjas that would just go take people out, like they they would do that. Just head on bikes on in front of Nintendo of America. I swear to God. Unironically, un my dad works at Nintendo. Would be a threat now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wait, you are you serious? Is that? His guys, his dad works at Nintendo. Don't don't fuck with him, man. Don't I, fuck with him. I the modded we in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> Every time uh, something on your wish list uh, on the Switch goes on sale, you just get a notification that's just like we're out, we're offering you a bargain that you can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> Buy Mario All Stars again! Oh my god! I mean, they won't even do that. Well, they're insane. <laughs> I saw this tweet the other day. I was like, I completely agree with them. I was like, it is psychotic behavior that they made 3D All Stars. There's a Mario movie out, and you cannot buy it. Like, not yep. without being, like, secondhand. Like, you can't buy that game now. Which is insane. That's absolutely nuts. <laughs> Fucking Nintendo, man. Like, what? Are... <laughs> They're just crazy people money. Like, we made all our money, and we're just crazy now. I just... <laughs> Fine. Sure. Anyway, they're just they're just owned by a mafia family at this point. I guess they so. are the mafia family. Like, they still make great games, and they know that's all they got to do. So. God, I'm buying the next game for God's sakes. You can't escape the company store, Nick. No. 
<laughs> All right, where are we at? Is it my turn? We're at Mr. We're at Min we're at Mr. SP. That's me. Oh, I need to oh. I need to actually be putting some of these burgers down. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. SP, thank you for the 421. This would have been funnier yesterday. <laughs> uh, Toke it up. Uh, we got Channel Pup, that fucker, uh, with two pounds, where we're going to send him. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm die. Thank you forever. <laughs> Gotta be rude to one of our listeners. I've never heard of that name before. <laughs> you can't be rude to one of our brand new listeners here, Wayne. For God's sakes. Yeah, first time comment to your Channel Pup. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's either gray XI or gray 11, Roman numeral. Either way, thank you. With the $20. Uh, birthday money for my adventure-loving brother, Pup. Well, thank you. Aw. All right. So. Sonic Fan 1661, thank you very much for the $2. Reality, just like irritable bowel syndrome, is lovely. All right. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I don't like that. All right. Well, we got Mr. <laughs> SP with $10. This latest arc from IDW has the potential to surpass the Metal Virus saga. I can't wait to see how everything wraps up. The comics have been so, uh, have been on another level since issue 50, and it's only gotten better. I, I have a, I, I need to see how it continues. Metal Virus is going to be hard to beat. Um, I do like the, the amount of character that's being given in here, but it's just like in terms of the events. Yeah, there's some cool stuff going on, but I'm not sure if there's anything that that quite feels as as heavy as what was going on in Metal Virus. Yeah, it's more deep. It's more deeply personal stuff lately. Yeah, which isn't bad good. either. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's 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 really hard to top like the the stakes of Metal Virus. So it is what it is, though. Like that was always going to be like a downward turn on some level. Like they couldn't keep that that kind of momentum up in terms of uh uh theming and everything else but i i've been having a good time with it absolutely um okay so is it my turn then yep all right sonic fan 1661 back again thank you with two dollars we will own nothing and we will be happy <laughs> oh boy mm. that's the that's the company way sirs so Sonic fan 1661, thank you for the $10. I don't know if this affects anyone in the show or the audience, but while Kroger employees are not being properly paid, they're in a $24 billion deal to buy a competitor. So be wary of potential layoffs, folks. I I have thoughts on that because I used to be a Kroger employee. I mm, I don't I I don't want to get into that right now. I forget how big I, Kroger is. Dude, I th I thought that I didn't know what a Kroger was, and I got like I got here, discovered Kroger, and was like, okay, this is a cool store, and then realized that like they owned a bunch of gas stations and all kinds of shit, like where I grew up, even where there weren't Krogers. Mm -hmm. Just they got they got their fingers in a lot of pies. I do not like their company. Then again, that's I don't like most retail companies. They're all kind of sort of garbage. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Well, uh, shoot. Let's see. Um, now we're on uh, Sonicu, so Sonicu, Sonicu. Uh, with two dollars, give Pup a hearty happy birthday from us all. No. We did. I'm, I'm gonna slap him with a Subway sandwich. Oh my god. Why would you not slap him with a public sandwich? Yeah, it's, you know, nah. because it's a better sandwich. I yeah yeah. That's why I'm not using that. <laughs> <laughs> Be a waste of a good sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> You could have you could have given this man quality, and instead, you gave him something that's not legally bred in a few countries. It's it's his birthday. I'll slap him with a pot belly sandwich. There you go. Hey, there you go. That's the good shit. All right. Um, where are we at? Sonic. Uh, is, oh, Sonic oh, Man. are you? You don't know where we're at. Here, I got you. Oh God. Burger. Slap him with a burger. <laughs> Sonic fan sixteen sixty one with another two dollars. Thank you. Sonic is beef stroking off. This di <laughs> <laughs> is he well? <laughs> Prove it. Oh my god. <laughs> that was well done. That was good. <laughs> that was good. What is in your mouth? Mighty Invincible. Thank you for the 999. 
All my empathy to you, Nick. My dog passed recently, and now I feel stuck with my monster of a puppy. Oh, that's how it goes sometimes. And sorry about your passing too, Mighty. Never fun. But let's keep saying it's always, always, always worth the worth the pain. Just the amount of joy animals bring is just incomparable. Cricket, you gotta be jumping on me right now. I'm trying to talk <laughs> about mice and shit. You piece time. of shit, dog. That was a perfect time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, go see uh, Don. Yeah, got still got plenty of time with him, so I'm going to make the most of it and make sure he's spoiled yeah. like crazy. So, Give him lots of walkies. Hell yeah. All right. Speaking of, um, Wayne, I think you got our last super chat. And then we're going to call. I do. It. Yeah, we're going to have to go ahead and call out. I cut off super chats after this. Um, But Mr. SP with five dollars. If Bowser made a castle out of the junk mail that piled up, how big would it be? Yeah, I'm terrible. Humor me. <laughs> oh, my God. Got six cricket. Fuck off. Good Lord. <laughs> what junk mail? What are we talking about? I think I think it's supposed to be connected to the guy that got uh, arrested. I Mm. Yes, cricket, get down. God's sakes, I'm not done with the show. I'm not done. With the... Oh my god! Just made a castle. Uh, jump me out of the pile. Up. All right. Well, guys, we're gonna call it for today. This horrible dog is literally trying to pull me away. I think she's telling me she's gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I gotta call it. Yeah. Cricket, get off of me. Horrible dog. All right. <laughs> she literally grabbed grab my sleeve and is trying to yank me out of the chair. <laughs> Arr. Arr. She's just being a good pupper. No, she's not. She destroyed a raptor. <laughs> you horrible little the animal. The hunter has she become doesn't... the hunted. <laughs> the clever girl has become the clevered girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's the true apex predator now. So, Wayne, what are you up to? Uh, working on Digimon Rumble Arena, which I'm hoping to have out next week. Um, definitely looking to have that done uh this uh, uh you know by the end of this month i don't want it bleeding into uh into may and then i will be streaming uh uh tears of the kingdom when that comes out on the 12th definitely so that's going to be a lot of fun um yeah yeah uh and i just got done uh streaming breath of the wild if if you're ever looking for my archive stuff on my twitter i post uh where I've got uh, my my archive channel where I upload um you know the the vods from uh my uh streams and and such. Very nice, very very nice. All right, Cirrus. Uh, I'm in the middle of subathon right now. I'm actually live over on Twitch at the moment, uh, and this one's a little bit different than normal. So normally with subathons, uh, I'm in one place constantly, but my goal with this one is to be able to be a little mobile. Uh, so even tonight, I'm actually going to be going to a uh, Magic the Gathering Wheel of Fortune tournament. And if you're a Magic player, you know how expensive that card is. Several, several hundred dollars. Um, so I'm actually going to be streaming that tournament as part of my subathon. And on top of that, during this subathon, uh, every amount for every there's a formula for it that's up on Twitter. Uh, but for every certain amount of subs that are dropped on my stream, uh, it actually translates into exercise as well, since I'm not going to the gym during this time. So uh, people have been torturing me is what I'm saying. My legs hurt. Fair enough. That's pretty rad. Yeah, uh, if you guys want to go uh, support Cirrus, uh, just head over to twitch.com slash what is it? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Necosirus. Well, there you go. N-E-K-O. You know how to spell that. Yep. S U R I S. So yeah, go be sure to check that out. Um, I'm gonna go let these puppies out, and then I'm gonna hop into our uh, our post show area for a little bit since we did wrap up pretty early. This was a short show, so I'll be in there for oh. like 20, 30 minutes or something like that, and play some Fortnite yeah. or something. But yeah, that's gonna be what I'm doing. Oh, this horrible little dog. Otherwise, I'll have a video out in a week or two, something like that. It'll be fine. All right, get away from me, dog. All right, that's going to be it. Uh, sun has set on this stream, so I'll, I'll catch you guys.